So let's talk about molasses. You saw me use it in that Boulder County training video, but I rarely use it anymore. Back in 2004, when I was trying to figure out how to teach cows to eat weeds, I read lots of research about how animals choose what to eat. Some studies showed that when an unfamiliar food had a familiar flavor, the animal was more likely to try it. I also knew that molasses was one of the carbohydrates that helped ruminants deal with nitrate-accumulating plants like Canada thistle, so I decided to use molasses as a familiar flavor and the solution to potential nitrate issues. Somehow, though, whenever I told people how to train cows to eat weeds, it was as if all they heard was, molasses. To clear things up, Peggy Rathman, who was one of the ranchers I was working with, and I, ran a little experiment. Is molasses the silver bullet? We took one group through the training process and then measured how much of the first weed mixture they ate. We took an untrained group and offered them the same weed mixture. The trained group ate 81 ounces on their first try, and the untrained group ate only 3 ounces. This is really no surprise. The research says that the more good experiences someone has with new things, the more likely they are to try more new things. So it's the process of giving our trainees good experiences, not the molasses, that makes trainees want to try the weeds. The only time I use molasses now is if I'm nervous or the farmer or rancher I'm working with is nervous. Trainees read our body language and decide, maybe what they're feeding me isn't good. So I buy a jar of molasses from the grocery store and drizzle some into the tubs. I relax, the farmer or rancher relaxes, and the cows eat the weeds. Yeah. So if you find yourself nervous, pull out the molasses. Then drop me a note and I'll send you my favorite chewy ginger cookie recipe to use up the leftover molasses.